Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about performance optimizations in Rust. We're going to try and optimize together a Rust program, discussing the available techniques and tools. But before diving right into that, we're going to briefly cover the concept of optimization in general. If you're not interested, feel free to skip to the next section. For the sake of this video, we'll define performance optimizations as the process of getting a program and making it faster, smaller, or more efficient. And the key of any performance optimization is finding a way to measure the performance. This helps us in two ways. First of all, it helps us understand which parts of the program are worth optimizing. And the second one is to understand if the changes that we introduce to the system are actually having a positive impact or not. There are multiple ways to measure the performance of your program. The easiest might be to just measure how much it takes to execute, for example, using the Unix time utility. But we also have at our disposal much more powerful tools like profilers, which give us very granular information like which function is having the most impact on performance. But we can't talk about performance optimizations without discussing the main downside, which is optimizing a program typically makes it less general. To better illustrate this point, let's think of our software as a car. One day we might be requested to make the car work on rough terrain. And so we start optimizing and we figure out that wheels are really not the best answer for this kind of environment. And so we end up with something like a tank, of course, without the cannon. And we are very happy because our new vehicle goes very well on the rough terrain. Now, the problem is that the following week requirements change and the client now wants our vehicle to go very well on racing circuits. And now we have a problem because the tank doesn't work very well on the racing circuit. In fact, it is worse than our original car. And in software, the concept is absolutely the same because when you optimize a program, often it loses generality. And that's a big loss for a business because in a business, you typically want to be as flexible as possible when requirements change. And that's also why some quotes like premature optimization is the root of all evil exist. All right, so we are now ready to optimize a Rust program together. For the sake of this example, I chose a very simple program. It takes as input a book, in this case, Moby Dick, and then it uh, just counts the words, then it sorts the words, and then it takes the top 10 words in the book. So if I now run it with Cargo Run, what we'll see is a list of the 10 most popular words in the book. Here we go. So the, no surprise, is the most common word. Now, the easiest way to start optimizing the program is to just check how much it takes to execute in general. So we could do in pure Rust, this is one of the many ways you can do it. We could use an instant, for example, we do start is instant.now and then at the end of the process, we can just do print time taken and now it prints. So if I now execute the program again, you can see that it took 10 seconds, all right? So we are now ready to optimize it using a profiler. For this video, our profiler of choice will be Sampli, a very easy to use profiler that works on macOS and Linux. If you are a Windows user and you're interested about profiling Rust programs on Windows, please let me know in the comments below and it might be a topic of a future video. The easiest way to install Sampli is to just use cargo install locked Sampli and this will build Sampli for your machine and install it as a binary. So we are now ready to profile our program with Sampli. The way we are going to do it is to use two steps. First of all, we are going to build the binary with cargo build and then we'll find our binary in the target, the bug and then performance demo in this case and we are going to point simply to it. Now I'm going to do it in just one program so that it's easier to iterate. So we're going to do cargo build and simply record and then target the bug performance demo. Now we can run it, cargo will build it and then simply will start profiling it. And at the end of it, which will roughly take 10 seconds in this case, it will open up a window with the profiler here we go. Now we can see all the results of the profiling. Here you can see that it took roughly 11 seconds. And here in the flame graph, which is one of my favorite tools, you can see how much 
the different function took in percentage. For example, this one you can see took 51%, this one 43, and this is incredibly valuable. But wait a second, some of you might be thinking, so far we build our Rust program in debug mode, and that's not how profiling is supposed to be done. Because the Rust compiler does so many optimizations in release mode, when you're having performance problems, you should always start by running by compiling the program in release mode. And here we can see an example. So it took roughly 10 seconds in debug mode, but if we run the program with cargo run release, you will see that it takes significantly less. In this case, it took one second, a almost 10x speed up from before. Now, I didn't do it from the beginning for a specific reason. And the reason is that if we point by default simply to a release build binary, it will not give us much useful information. So let me demonstrate that to you. I do cargo build release, and then I do again, simply record and then target release performance demo. Now let's give it a few seconds. And here we go. This is the new result. And as you can see, there's really not much valuable insights here. You can see that what we have is a lot of methods that we don't recognize except the main function. And the reason is that the Rust compiler actually removes the debug symbols and inlines a lot of functions. So whereas here we had, this was the debug run, we have a lot of methods that we actually have in the program, like split line into words, it's this method, split lines into words. In the release build, we don't have by default all that information. So we need to enable the debug symbols in the release builds. And to do that, we're going to go in the cargo.tumble file and then add profile release debug one. Now, if we rerun what we run before, so cargo build release, simply record and the performance demo. And again, we give it a couple of seconds, but we'll see a profiler run that actually has all our symbols, which is great. This tells us exactly which functions are taking the most time. And we have pretty much all the speed ups that the release build usually give us. So it's a very good representation of how the final performance will be. We are now ready to optimize our Rust program. And one of the reasons why profilers are so helpful is that they give us big hints on where to focus on that we wouldn't get by just looking at the code. For example, if I look at this code, you see that first we count the words, then we sort them and then we print them, right? And my first thought when I saw this code was, oh, the sorting might have a, actually a, a big impact in the, in the whole thing. We might be able to do the counting without sorting, right? But it turns out that if I see the profile, you see that sort or count, it's taking 0.1% of the total execution, whereas count words, it's taking almost 100%. Now, this means in practice that sort or count has virtually zero impact on the final performance. And so if we want to optimize the program, we shouldn't focus on, on sort or count. So we start our optimization by focusing on the count word method because it takes almost 100% of the total execution. And if we see which methods it calls, we can see that update word count is 58% of the total. So it seems to be a nice place to focus our first attention. And for example, here you can see this two string method, it takes 24% of the total execution, right? So let's go back and see the code together. If we go in the count words, we see that it calls the update word count. And here you can see the two string method. This method is taking 24% of the total execution. And in Rust, because we have act, we have control over the executions, one question we might be asking is, can we limit how much we allocate, right? And here you can see how wasteful it is because we are passing words, which are just a reference. And then we, every time, allocate the word as a string to use the entry or insert API. Now we could do something that it's a bit less elegant, but much more efficient, which is splitting this uh, process into steps. The first thing that I can do is saying if um, word count contains key word, then I just 
get the value of the current word and I increment it. Otherwise, I insert a word and here I allocate. Now, why is there, why should there be a difference here? It's a big difference because think about it. If we look at the results, you can see that the words, the top words are repeated hundreds of thousands of times, right? And so this means that for each of those words, they need to be allocated once and then they could be reused, right? And so what this does is basically to check that the, the dictionary contains the word, we just use the reference, as you can see here, it's a string reference and we don't allocate. We only allocate if the word is not contained in the count dictionary. And if we try to rerun the program and profile it, so we do um, build release, simply record, we give it a couple of seconds. What we have is that here you can see that we went from 1.3 seconds to 1.1. And if we go in the flame graph, you see that now update word count went from taking about 58% to taking about 48. So we squeezed a bit of performance in a very simple way without changing the API too much. So we can move on with our optimization and we see that this split line into words method is taking quite a bit of time. And if we, we check the methods that it calls, a lot of it are related to the vector. If we go back to our code, we can see that the split line method, split line into words, what it does is it takes the line and then it creates a vector of string references. And this is called for each line of the book, which are a lot. One of the things that you might notice is that this vector creation is actually causing a lot of allocations in our program. And so one of the things we might try to do is getting rid of this vector. And one way to do it is by using iterators, which are one of the ways that Rust allows you to have abstractions that are zero cost. So let's work through it together. First of all, I, I remove this explicit type because it's not necessary. And then what we say is saying, okay, instead of returning a vector of strings as uh, slices, what we can do is we can return an iterator that has as a string, sorry, as an item, a string reference like this. And here we don't need the collect anymore because, whoops, because all these methods are actually uh, returning an iterator, right? And so we also need to update this update word count, which instead of a vector, it's going to take the same iterator, exactly. And here it's complaining because we need to have a lifetime, an explicit lifetime, and this is quite easy to do. We just add a lifetime in the function and we also add it here. And here we go. Let's rerun it together and see how it goes. All right, here you can see that we went from 1.1 seconds to 700 milliseconds. So another big jump. And here you can see that basically this update word count now has the majority of the time. But that's because of course, the iterator is now part of this function because the iterators are evaluated lazily. So now the method that we had before, which is split lines into words, it's not actually executing this code, but it's creating an iterator that is going to be executed here while basically iterating over it. All right, so we can continue our investigation. And if we look at the report, we can see that the hash map methods are taking quite a bit of time, almost 50% of the total. So it turns out that if your Rust program doesn't need to be robust against denial of service attacks, you can switch the default hash map implementation with something faster like Rust C hash implementation. So to do that, I'm just going to copy the version. I'm going to add it to the cargo tomo under dependencies. And then if I go to the main program, I can just replace all the hash map uses with FS hash maps. So let me do it together. Do FS FX hash map. Then we need to of course, import it from the right place and also it uses default rather than new. With that being said, the program is ready and we can just rerun it. Let's give it a couple of seconds. And here you can see that we went from 700 milliseconds to 600. 
What we did so far kind of works, but it's not the best that we can do. You see, if I rerun the same program multiple times, one thing you might notice is that the time it takes varies between runs. For example, the first run took 563 milliseconds, whereas the last one took 600 milliseconds, and it's the same exact program. The reason why it got different times is that in the system, there are multiple programs competing for resources, and this is not deterministic. So every time you run a program, you are competing with other programs, you might be facing cold starts, which slow down the execution. And so if you want to have the best results and you want to understand if your changes are actually improving or not the results, you can use a more scientific method like Criterion RS, which is basically a benchmarking library for Rust that takes care of a lot of problematic edge cases that you might not consider in, in benchmarking. It's a bit outside of the scope for this video, but if you're interested about Criterion, please let me know in the comments below and we'll make a dedicated video for it. I'm going to close the video with a few practical tips. When you're optimizing a program, it's good practice to commit each of your optimizations individually without trying to optimize too many things at a time, such as what I'm doing here. The reason is that optimization is kind of a research process where you try out different hypotheses, you measure, you try a new one and you measure. So what you can do when you commit is that every time, for example, here, I might start and do an optimization that, uh, I don't know, does uh, removes this file, I don't know, and then I realize that it doesn't improve the performance or, or it breaks things or things get so messy that you can't really figure out what's going on. If that's the case, and you're using Git with each commit, you can just go inside your version control and discard the changes. And then you're back to where you were before and you can try a different route. Another useful technique that you can use is what I call the comment out technique. So sometimes you don't have the luxury or, or time to attach a profiler to your running program. And when that happens, a very simple technique that you can use is trying to comment out entire sections of the program and see how the overall runtime performs. For example, here I have the, the program we had at the beginning. So if I try to run it in release mode, we see that it takes about one second and I can try commenting out things. For example, let me comment out the sort word method and also the print. And if I try to run it, you see that it still takes almost a second and more than a second. So I know without using a profiler that these two methods actually don't have that much of a weight in the overall program. All right, so that was all for this video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.